Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. Uh, I'm here today with, yeah, a project. I had one of those days where I just fancy doing a project from start to finish. Not a huge one. Uh, I'm going to try and get it done in one part. Uh, as you're seeing it now, I don't know if I did it in one part. If I haven't, it will say part one. <laughs> but it will be two parts maximum. Right, I've been clearing out and sorting out stuff and I came across these what I'd bought and never used. Right, I'll show you how they come and what they are. They are cards. That, they're meant for you to use them as greeting cards. They're meant to fit a four by six inch photograph in. Use as Christmas cards, anything you want. They come with the envelopes. I bought them from Amazon. Uh, the ones I bought are no longer available, but mine were all craft. The same company have since put another pack together with craft ones, cream ones, black ones. And white ones, which I would have probably bought. I'd have known they were there. So I have linked those in my Amazon storefront if you're interested. Right, there's some plus and minuses to these. Um, I don't, can you see? I don't like how much of the side is glued. Yeah? I just don't like it. Also, I think they're a bit of a snug fit in the envelope. Fine if you're going to send them as a greeting card. But we're junk journalers. We don't do that. And what I want to make today is a little folio type thing. Well, not a folio, just a fold up journal card. So what I've done, that's one I put in the envelope, see, and I couldn't even get it back out. So some are a very snug fit. So I've done this. I've cut a couple of them down. I had to do it off camera to see whether it worked, because it would have been a very boring video if it didn't work and then I couldn't do a project. So what I've done is I've cut an eighth of an inch off either side and if you can see, they're still stuck plenty good enough. I haven't cut off any off the bottom because it's folded there. How do I know that? Because I cut bottom off one and it all went horribly wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, don't cut any off the bottom. It don't work. So, these are the ones where I have cut. I've cut an eighth of an inch off either side. I've cut some off the top. Is that, oh, that's me. That's me one that didn't work. Look, that's the bottom. Throw that one away. This, these are my two I'm using. And I've cut a little bit down off the top to make these two the same height. Yeah. But I can still fit a three and three quarter inch by four inch journaling card in. Because even a four inch is very snug. If you put in a photograph in, not a problem. So I've tested that by cutting down a piece of craft card to check that it fits. Yeah. So I've made, did I make that four and a quarter? No, I made it six and a quarter. So the height that meant for is six. But if I cut it down to six, it disappeared in. So I've cut one to six and a quarter high. And is it four and five eighths? Uh, four and seven eighths wide, yeah? And then it fits in absolutely perfect. Yeah. I'm not going to use plain card in it though. I'm going to use these. Now this is a pack I've had for a while and not wanted to use. They are Country Diary Nature Notes postcards. They're a smidgen shiny but I can live with that. And they're all images from the Nature Notes book. Now this pack I've got, the corner is a smidgen battered in places and the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of these pictures down to the size to fit in here. Yeah? So... I'll get rid of the ones I'm not using so I don't confuse myself. Now I've showed you how they come and what you can and can't do with them. So they're the ones I'm going to be using. That's my template for my card inside. And I'm just going to make a simple fold over journal card. These are the envelopes that come with them, which are, I love these kind of envelopes. You've got much more room for tucking something in. So I'm going to tuck those envelopes inside each other like, well, one flap inside, like so. And then it's just going to be a fold out journal card with two of these inside and another pull out journal card. I think that'll be lovely in a junk journal. And I'm going to decorate it all in Edith. So I've grabbed my microphone wiring way. Let's pin you up out of way. Thank you. I've grabbed my drawer of Edith bits and. I'm going to collage the fronts. Inside 
I'm going to collage and I may put an extra pocket. We'll see how well it closes. But these cards here with the postcards I'm going to slip inside. I'm just going to do some stamping yeah, around the edges. And then just let that lovely picture from Edith Holden be the focal point on those. So, shall I start by doing this or shall I start by doing this? I think I might start by doing the cards first. Then that might, I might then decide which pages from the book I'm going to decorate the envelopes with. So, I'll put my box out of the way so I've got more room to work on my desk. You go there, box. And I've got my little trimmer. And we'll cut these cards down. Because they're just not going to be the right size unless I do. So let's choose which pictures to use. I want landscape ones. Now that's going to be an ideal one for cutting into it. Because there's a lot of edge on it. Right, I've never taken one of these out before. These cards, they go from... I think I paid about £7 for this pack, but I'm not joking, they go up to ridiculous amounts sometimes. They can be like £30, £40. But if you're like Edith Olden, oh, I'm taking two out, you'll know the books are like that. And what do I always say? I don't buy it when I need it, I buy it when it's cheap. <laughs> so, yeah. Buy it when it's cheap. I honestly haven't looked how much they're running at at the moment. But you don't have to use postcards for the inside. You could use anything. I'm just going to take a few out. I'm conscious of not ripping them. I'm beginning to wonder if I shouldn't have just taken this apart altogether. But you never know. Is that one going to come out? Just. Oh, I like that one. I'll take one more out. I think I'm bending top of some of these. Yeah, they do not like coming out of the book very good, so I'm really glad I'm going to be cutting them down. So, I really like that one. And that, I like the butterfly. We could make it the butterflies and the birds. I'll try cutting these two down, see how I get on. So I want to cut it down to six and a quarter, was it? Oh, the height on these is already good. So I might just take the serrated bit off the top. So the height will be spot on. Yeah, just take that off. And then I want to make them three and seven eighths wide. So get your ruler and see what that will cut this down to. I'm conscious that some of them I might lose too much. That, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to take just a little bit off that side. Let's see where three and seven eighths takes us to. We'll lose some daffodil. I'm going to take a smidgen more off this side. Then I'll cut this to three and seven eighths. Yeah, I'm still quite happy with that. Yeah, the back still looks good. We've lost some of the edge, but it still looks fine to me because they are postcards. This should now fit in here, lovely. And we should see the birdie picture. Oh, we've lost the bird's head. If we have him over to that side, we can see the bird's head. That's fat. Yeah, I'm, I'm just okay with that. That is something I did not think of when I was cutting the picture down. I should have. I really should have. So this time, let's think of it. I'll use my card. Yeah, I'm going to take most of it off of this side first. I'm going to take a smidgen more off that side. And then I'm going to make it three and seven eighths by taking the rest off this side. Let's see how this one looks in here. just got the butterfly at the top yeah that's lovely that's going to look really nice yeah I'm going to take those out so I'm then going to do a little bit of stamping on there I'll move the chopper out of the way we're not going to need that again yet a while 
So, I was going to go just for a text stamp, but um, I might use my fill note stamps again. Wow, they're getting some use, aren't they? Right, to do the stamping, I'm going to pop, I might as well use this now, I'll cut it to size. I'm going to pop that piece of card back in because I don't want to get stamping on this bit here. I think it'd look a bit odd. Would it? I don't know. Yeah, it would look odd. So these are the stamps I'm going to use. My Tim Holtz Field Notes one. I'm going to use my favourite VersaFine Sepia. I'll just grab a backing piece to put behind me. I've always got them hanging about. Come here, label backing sheet. Oh, what are you? Oh, that's a receipt for a book I don't need. <laughs> it was. It's not a business receipt. It's a book I bought, Rebecca. I'll put the stamps in now, not using out it way. I am getting good at keeping my desk clear if you're watching, Tanya, which you normally are watching. So, I think I want to get that one with the butterfly on. We're only going to get part of it, obviously. And I want this one part of that there and part of that and 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 that one so grab my stamp block I'm gonna do these two first I'm not looking for perfect impressions on the stamp so I'm not gonna be upset if they're not perfect that's going to go there. I like that. Should I do them? No, I can't do them both at the same time. I've only got one piece of card. I could cut another piece of card, but oh, that'd be hard work, wouldn't it? Really hard work cutting a piece of card. I'm going to have that one going up the side. Yep. That can go there. Is that gonna yeah, that's wide enough for that. Yeah, you know when you just get the urge that you've got to do a you've got to finish a project, haven't you? You've got to finish it and you've got to finish it now. Right. I'm quite liking that. I'll put a bit more of that one here a bit sideways. Yeah. That's it. And I think I want this round one on somewhere. I think I want that there. Yes. Do I want a number? I went mad with numbers the other day, didn't I? I think I want the other round one. I'm not cleaning these off because I'm going to use them again on the other one. Yep, and we want something a bit texty again. Have this specimen label one just going off there, and I need something there. I think I'll put a number there. I'll have that one because it just fell off. Liking it, and I want something there. Oh, do you know there's one here that I never use because it's always hiding under there <laughs> and it says this side up. I could have done with having that the right way, couldn't I? We'll have part of this side up here. Yeah, oh yeah, really happy with that. So I'm going to slide this one, I'll pull this card out, it's not going to want to slide is it? So that's that one. I'll let that dry a little bit before I go putting the card back inside. And I'm going to pop this one in. And we'll do some different stamping on this one, but with the same stamps, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I'm going to put me this side up, one down here. Yep. That round one down here. Yep. 
butterfly one again i need that on oops i didn't stick it to my block well enough so i've got the butterfly in the top corner there i think i'll just have part of the butterfly here on that one yeah and let's use one of the bigger ones i could actually use this twice so i'll put it on my block upside down i'm going to be getting all inky now and put that there. Can you tell I'm loving using stamps lately? I don't know where it is. And I think I want some more of that sideways there. Yep. Got this one with the flower. I think I'm going to put that at this side this time. They do stamp, you know. When I'm not bothering whether I stamp really good or not, it's I can't not stamp too I can't not stamp good with these. They're really lovely these Tim Holtz stamps. Very easy to stamp with. You can tell the good quality. Have I used that one that says collect? No, I haven't. I think I might have that up at the top. Yep. We haven't had a number yet, have we? think this time I might have no let's use a different number now I've inked that up yucky <laughs> yeah, use a different number and I want the number at the top up here but I'm really not thinking too much about where to put stuff it's quite freeing again I forgot which ones of those I have and haven't used I haven't used that one that says specimen I think we'll have this one here. Yeah. And I'm going to use the other side of it there. And I just want something up in that corner now. Let's have something a bit different that's not on the other one. Book number 710. I'm going to put that. That's what this stamp says. Book number 710. Lovely. Now I've got loads of stamps to clean. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause momentarily to get rid of all these inky stamps. Two ticks. There we go. That's my Timmy stamps all cleaned up. I'm just going to grab my Distress Oxide Walnut Stain and do a little bit of inking around outside on these. But I'm really happy with how that stamping went. Yeah, I'm turning into a stamping maniac, aren't I? I did vow to use my Tim Holtz stamps more, and now I'm using them even more. I apologise if it uh, is encouraging you to buy them, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, one of my uh, longest subscribers, <laughs> should I say, wasn't it, Deborah? Deborah sent me the gorgeous happy mail for my birthday, that huge one. Yeah, she keeps saying every time she sees me use these, she keeps thinking that she really does need to get them. And now I've gone and used them again. And I have to say, Deborah, I did not have that in mind when I used them. I just, yeah. Do you know when you just get it in your head, you want to do a certain thing? Yeah. I saw Tanya at Tatty Treasure do a little project with some craft envelopes and card of the week. And I loved it. So I've been wanting to do something with craft card. I'm just going to get some ink around that little lip. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to make that bigger. Because I struggled to grab, because I cut some off the top, I did struggle to grab the uh, card. So I'm going to grab my slightly bigger circle punch and I'm just going to make that slightly bigger. And I'm shouting now because I'm turning away from the camera in case you can't hear me. Oh, craft lunch. Oh dear. No, don't. Right. It, it, we didn't have a craft lunch. I've got my one and a half inch circle punch and I want to make this little notch slightly bigger. Which I need to go in that way, don't I? I could not get my head round that then. Which way to put the circle punch in? That's better. Yeah, if you don't cut any off the top, you obviously won't need to do this. There you go. You can see how much I've cut off. Just a little sliver. So I've not cut loads off. 
Right, so that's those two done, and I really love the look of those. They should be dry now as well, after I paused. So I'm just going to pop these in. Oh, that one's upside down. Silly woman. Yeah, oh, we can just seat bird's head. We're happy with that. So that's those in. Oh, I really like these. I like these on their own as they are. You could pop these in a journal just as they are. Gorgeous. Oh, wow. I'm really happy with them. I'm not normally the type of crafter who goes on about how gorgeous their own stuff is and wow, I love it, but I do. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm being a bit self-indulgent today. Right, let's grab the envelopes. So I'll pop those to one side. And I'm going to grab the envelopes. Right, before I glue them together, I'm just going to go round and do some inking on the edges because it might be a bit more difficult when I've glued them which I'm conscious of but having seen how nice those cards look with that colour tone of the Edith Elden postcards I'm going to leave a lot more craft card exposed than I had originally intended to but I'm going to grab that bit of card there just so I can go around these edges under there we'll do that bit there we go like the look of that have i done both sides i've not done my flap i need to do it inside of one flap and outside of other so i'll just do it inside of this one that glue does get covered by the way and as long as you don't go uh, immersing your <laughs> journaling water you shouldn't have a problem Do the outside that's going to go in but i still need to do that edge oh, i'll do that edge just to be on the safe side i can't my brain's not working it out like it ought to and i don't need to go around there no i don't i will do on this one because it's going to be on the outside at the back sorry if it's boring just watching me ink and listening to me waffle Yeah. We're having free chicken for tea, not free range, completely free. I have actually, I've been the recipient of a kind gift from Asda. If you ladies in the US, Asda is, well I don't think it's owned by Walmart anymore. It's a supermarket that was owned by Walmart. I think they've sold it to someone. And I had my online shopping delivered yesterday and I didn't realise at the time, but they've delivered me a chicken that I didn't buy, I didn't order. It's a lovely chicken. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's for tea today. Free chicken. So I've either been gifted a chicken or I've inadvertently stolen a chicken. Yeah. So yeah, I could be a chicken rustler and I don't know it. I'm wondering if it's because we normally have a chicken, right? And we haven't had a chicken. Now, I don't know where these deliveries come from. <laughs> But I do talk to delivery drivers and sometimes they'll say they've only got one delivery in that one hour slot. So I'm guessing they're more, done more on a local basis from your local supermarket. So maybe it's the same person who picks our order every week and is so used to putting a chicken on, they did it again even though I'd not ordered one. So yeah, there you go. Inking an inane waffle about chickens. Where else can you get that? Uh, bet you can't get it on Netflix. No. Right, now we're inked, I'm going to put these two together, which one did ink the outside of that one. And because I'm going to cover it, I really didn't actually need to ink the outside, so you know what? I'm going to do it that way around. What a silly woman I can be. So I'm going to tuck that one in there, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get it half tucked, I think, before I put any glue on. I just don't want to get glue where it doesn't need to be. I won't get glue where it doesn't need to be, will I? Because it's going to slide in across that bit and that bit's going to need glue, isn't it? So if I put my glue on this flap first, then slide it in, it should all be fine, she says. I'm going to use Kalal because Kalal doesn't wrinkle and it's got a slightly longer drying time. And if we get it where we don't want it, it rubs off really easy. 
So here we go. Pop it around the edge. And then zigzag it across the middle. Put your pin in. Yay! I'm getting good. Putting pins in. Who would have thunk it? So yeah, slide that in. I don't want to take too long about it. Then I'll do that. Yeah, that's going to be fine. We may have to put some kind of closure on this. Just make sure it's not butted up too far though. But not so far that we end up with like a gusset we don't want and the envelopes don't stick. Yeah, that's going to be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this bit now. nothing new gluing your envelopes together like this i think the first time i someone saw someone do it it was dawn at the book vandal shop i do love her tutorials yeah she's not making as many videos but she's doing some marvelous digital designs do you know i've bought her last few kits and i haven't used them yet they're so gorgeous you buy them you print them you think that's too gorgeous to use and that's how silly is that attitude but i slip in and out of that attitude me that's too gorgeous to use. Well, if you use it, print another. Yeah, who would have thunk it? Right, that's that. So that's going to be my fold over. So we need to decorate this. And I'm thinking, because these look so blinking gorgeous. Oh, I just love the look of that. I may, on the inside, I may just do a little pocket there that we can pop something in. And on the outside, I think I'm going to do some stamping again around the edge. Yeah. On the back of these, I'm leaving it blank because that's extra journaling space. But I think I may decorate that side and that side with stamping around the edges and a picture. I may even use a picture from... No, it'll be a bit too thick, I think, if I use more pictures from the postcards. Oh, will it? I don't know. I don't know. We could, couldn't we? Rather than even getting them, not even using any book page. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So let's have another look in here. Right. I was finding these not wanting to rip out properly. So I'm going to. Oh, yeah, there we go. I thought maybe we'd have staples under that. Don't wrinkle the front. You can use it, woman. It's a bit shinier than the postcard. So we'll have to put some matte medium on. But, oh, it's only the inside of. I nearly swore then. <laughs> it, it began with B. That's, don't worry, it weren't too bad. Right, I'm going to grab my pliers. This is where I'm going to have another crafter lunch because I just keep piling things up and piling things up until they want to fall on the floor. So, pliers, where are you? Pliers in the wrong drawer, highly likely. Lucky thump, where's the gone? I'm not seeing my favourite pliers, the world really could end. Pull the drawer all the way out. Do you remember when I tidied this drawer? I did a tidy this one on film. I'm looking for pliers with green handles. It's quite possible I've used them around house somewhere. So can't see them so I'm gonna to have to use a different pair I would normally have used my old pair but I've posted them to Tanya at Tatty Treasure so how on earth have I lost them oh they're on my desk in my desk tidy you silly woman so not only have you had inane chatter about chickens inking you've now had me looking for pliers thrill a minute on this channel <laughs> so yeah this is how I do these I do love these. These are actually, we are memory keepers, keepers pliers. 
I've wanted to go with my cinch that I've never used on camera. I can't seem to grab these ones. I think there's too much glue on them. Done it. Yeah, never say never. Three days later. Grab your handy little... Too. I've just heard my oven beep to tell me my chicken needs checking so I've got those out you won't notice I've gone I'm going to pause while I check my chicken and I'm back yeah the chicken's fine oh put your glasses on you can see wow wow my eyes are getting so bad right what I'm going to I'm going to do this now it's still got glue on the back. I think it's quite obvious I ain't got a clue what I'm doing with this, isn't it? Mm, I'm going to try and pull it through now from the other side. It's very thick, so I don't know whether it'll work. Try your little rounded knife, woman. Let's get under the edge. It's not going to work. I'll tell you what I will do. I'm going to try and pull this. And hope that it helps pull the staples out. They're in too good. Oh, I made a hole in my paper. I'll need a new piece. This is tough. I should have asked Tanya how she gets these out. I'm going to just try ripping from back now. And I'm going to try not to maim myself on those staples. Oh, I've just had an idea. Wire cutters. Right, wire cutters. I'm going to try and take the staples off there. Yeah. And then they should pull off, shouldn't they? No idea where that bit went. I am shutting my eyes every time I snip here. <laughs> I always do it when I cut. I've got glasses on, but they're not goggles, are they? Look at that poor little piece of paper. Right, let's see if this works. That glue's annoying. Yay, look at that. So much better. And then as it flips over, I should be able to tear it without ruining the postcard. This is very annoying how these are bound. Do you know, I think it might put me off buying another set. I don't like to have to work too hard, me, for things. I really don't. I suppose if you're going to use them as real postcards, you're not too bothered, are you? Because they're going to go through post. <laughs> they're going to get battered corners, aren't they? But I don't think many people use these as actual postcards. They're more of a collector's item, aren't they? says me cutting it up oh i hope no one takes offense to me cutting them up yeah i did uh, <laughs> i had a comment on one of my uh, videos and do you know when you really want to be really sarcastic but you have to hold it back i held it back yeah it was coming it was along the lines of why on earth would i want to cut up an edith olden page and stick it back together again <laughs> <laughs> well, because the page was too big for where I wanted it, because I enjoy, enjoy it, and because I can. <sighs> right, I think I may have got enough of these off. I think I've noticed that these postcards are in order of how they are in the book. They start, yeah, so do you know when I'm wanting <laughs> this one at front? And I've just gone to all that trouble of taking those staples out. It hadn't helped me in the slightest. So I'm still, it's really difficult to get them out. And I'm totally ruining this piece of paper. Oh, I like that butterfly one. Blue tits. That's not in order, is it? Because you don't get blue tits in the middle of the year, do you? Of course you do. Why am I thinking you only get blue tits at Christmas? Because there is an Edith Olden page with blue tits at Christmas. Oh, sure, we remain chatter now. Right, it's just took me three years to get these apart. And all I need is two. Which two? I want a really nice one for the front. And because I am so into butterflies, it's got to be one of the butterfly ones, me thinks. The thing now is, which butterfly one? There's so many. That doesn't have a butterfly, but I like it. 
I really do. So I've just said I want a butterfly one for the front, and I'm thinking I might go with that one, but then I really do like that. I just love that con. I'm going to go for that one. That's the front, and I want another bird for the back. Well, let's put that bird on the back, the winter bird. Yeah, we'll stick him on the back. Oh, wow, that took some doing. I'm sorry about that. At least you know what to... <laughs> if anyone knows a better way to keep these apart, please let me know. But at least you know the troubles you could face. Right, I'm taking the serrated bits off the top. And then I'm going to decide how much more needs taking off to fit them nicely on these envelopes. Right. Hmm. I don't really need to take any more off that, do I? It's a bit like a photograph album then, isn't it? But then I want some stamping round edge. So yes, I do need to take some off. Yeah, because we want to see some of that lovely stamping. Is that enough? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, it's enough. Right, then the birdie, we're going to lose some of his uh, foliage, but I think we can live with that. I can live with losing his foliage, as long as we're not losing the birdie. Do you know, I don't like that. The reason I don't like it is because I can see this. So do you know what I'm going to do on the back? I think I'm just going to put a piece of the Edith Holden book page. Yeah, I am, because I don't like how that looks. So leave your chopper out. I'm just going to be very random, because I know I want a text page. Oh, what about that? I know it's not all text, but I could use that. No, it's not big enough. I was thinking I could use that and fussy cut the butterfly. What about that? That's a full poem to autumn. I'm going to be three days now picking a page. Oh, I like that one. Did I whack my camera? It's still pointing in roughly the right direction. Yeah, I'm going to use that. So let's measure exactly how big this envelope is. I'm now surrounded by tools and all sorts of rubbish. It is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter-ish. So if I make it, I want to cut April off the top, for April. I want to cut that off. So I'll cut that down to, I'm going to cut it to an eighth under five. Yeah, I'm going to like that. And then I'll just mark with a pencil where to cut the other one because I don't want to get the big chopper out. Could have left it plain so he could journal but I, I don't want to yeah i'm going to be happy with that so i'm going to ink that edge and then i'm going to glue this one on with kalal we're on the home stretch now <laughs> one of little ones next door is not too happy don't know if you can hear it <laughs> Wow, I was only saying yesterday I can't do a straight line with glue to save my life. But that were the worst I've ever done, I think. There's that. So that's the back. Make sure I get it the right way up. I like that. If it's a later date, I could put a pocket on top of that. 
may do, may not. I just had the urge to do something with craft card and something. I've not done anything with Edith for ages. And I came across a lot of Edith stuff when I was sorting and tidying. I'm still on with trying to get to a point where I can get my second desk in. But whenever I've had the time to do it, I've not felt well enough to do it. I had my jab and then, yeah. And then it was too hot during the school holidays. Far too hot for me to be lumping furniture about. Right, so that's that. Let's grab the one I decided I wanted to put on the front. Oh, that's the one I was, was going to put on the back, isn't it? I've decided on the butterfly for the front. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I'm going to do some stamping. So I'll grab my stamps again. I'm going to do it just as randomly as I did last time. So I'll grab my piece of backing paper. Oh, look. Oh, here we go. Stamp block. I know I can see you hiding under that lot somewhere. I'm going to start off with that circular one because I do like it. I'm going to open that up because I don't want to get any ink on the inside at the back. Yeah. Then I'll this side up. Oh no, it's the front. I didn't ink stamp that one very well, but I said I didn't want my stamping perfect. Never a true word spoken. This, because I'm stamping on a double envelope, the stamping is not coming out as clear, but we can live with that. Oh, that's upside down. Put that upside down. I don't want my stamping upside down on this. Try and put your stamps on right way up, woman. And you want to know yourself. I think I want the butterfly up here. I have a number there. And I'll have another number at this bottom bit. I've done I've done the big round one, not the little round one. So I have that going off that side. And I'm gonna grab my big field notes one now to fill some bits in. That can go there. And I'm going to do it again at the bottom to get the top part of the stamp. And then I just need, oh, I'm throwing that around. We'll do that little one with the page number there. We can have two numbers next to each other. There's no law against it at all. Then I'm going to grab another one. It says fig. I've not used this one yet, so it don't want to come out. I like fastened in with little rubber tags the first time you use them. And I want that there. There we go. So that's my stamping on the front. That's my postcard I like it but I think it needs some ink around the edges on this one right happy accident has happened you've probably spotted it I'm using this ink instead of my distress ink now the reason it's a happy accident is this is shiny and the stress ink doesn't always do too well on shiny surfaces. So the fact that I've used that permanent ink is better. But I'm just going to come in and wipe it now. A. I can't be bothered to wait for it to dry. And B. It lightens it up a bit. You can tell I've done it before, can't you? Yeah. I do like that. Yeah. 
so I could put it on and leave it so they can pop some underneath but I'm not going to on this one I'm going to leave it as it is because I just like the look of it I'm dead sure for myself that I finally cracked open these postcards I do have the other set the country diary set but they're they look like brand new even though they were second hand from ebay let's pop you on there oh, i love the look of that stamping out edge i think i'll be using that on more things i think it looked fabulous on some tags right don't move because I'm going to open you up now and put the cards inside and then decide what I need to go on the inside. So I'll put these in and I'll check that that on the front hasn't moved. So that one's going to go in there. And we'll put the birdie on this side. I may come in, you know, and cut those down a bit, make it like that. Uh, Happy accident I had on the envelope I made yesterday. Love it. Now that's stayed put. So you could leave that like that now, but I think this needs something on it. It wants, I need some stamping up there and a couple of just small pockets. I don't want to put another postcard in, that, that'd be too big. So yes i'm gonna have to cut these down because that is wanting to go into there instead of coming out so i'll take that out and then i'll show you what i'm going to do because that's going to really annoy me it really is i've got to sort it out put the lid on your ink woman that's better stay away from your inky stamps move them out of the way there we go right i'm gonna cut i should have done this before to come together it would have been far easier but i didn't so i'm gonna have to deal with it now and i'm being very careful just snipping along and i'm gonna cut it down at an angle then I will round that off and I'm going to do the same with all four a little bit further I need to cut more off I need to straighten that up. And you know what I'm going to put along the middle? I'm going to put some of my framers tape on to strengthen it. Yeah. Because now that is going to be a weak point. I will need to cut a little bit more off to fit the framers tape on. It's gonna be. I'm gonna cut it down that far. There's gonna be no left of it. I can live with that. Change that a bit. Yeah. Next time I make one of these, I will think of that first. But. That's what you get when you've not made a prototype. Life's too short for prototypes. <laughs> I'm going to cut from there to there this time.
then run again. I don't know. I know they're not all even. I'll probably come in and tidy those up a little bit more off camera. But you see, the, you get the gist now what I'm doing. And I'm just going to straighten that off. And I'll just put the framers tape on the inside. It would have been too thick if I'd done it on both sides anyway. So I'm not too fussed about that. And it's a lovely colour to match. Just going to check it's, yeah, that's lined up enough. We'll cut it up a little bit longer than it needs. Get that off, silly woman. And then I'll cut it off flush to where it needs to be. Yet again, had I anticipated that problem, I could have made the framers tape go over. But it's not like washi tape this stuff, it sticks. And once it's stuck, it's stuck. I have had people ask me where I get mine from. I don't get it from Amazon. I get it from a place where I get my double-sided tape from, uh, for my ATG gun. And it's uh, on... Etsy, not Etsy, sorry, eBay, and I cannot do an eBay link to save my life. But I'll put the name of the shop, and it's, and I remember it because it's Lord of the Frames, yeah, in the UK that is, so you US ladies will have to find your own, I'm afraid. I'm happy with that now, yeah, so there we go, now this will fit in. Oh, it's so much easier to fit in now. Look at that. How much easier is that? Loving it. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of stamping on there. I'm going to put this underneath. And I'll get the card that I stamped onto before to pop in the pocket. And I'm going to pop a little pocket on there. So, bring that back in. Oh, I've just thrown a stamp on the floor. Oh, what am I like? Get your ink, woman. I'll do the stamping first because I want the pocket to then go up and over the stamping. That's there. Put it down the no about there because I want the pocket to come around there. It's like a big one. I think I might have one stamp on each side featured so you see the whole of it. And on this one, it's going to be let's pop that in here. That one. So while I hold that down, I'll grab a baby wipe. Huggies again. Getting one huggy out is like oh, knitting fog, shall we say. So that's that. I do like that. And then we'll have a little bit of that one. I'll even have it sideways there. I'll put these up out of the way so I don't be dipping anything in them again. Have the round one next. I think I'll have the round one featured on this side. And I want it there. I'm holding these down a little bit longer because we didn't get a brilliant impression on some of the ones when I did the front because I'm stamping onto two layers. So just by holding it down a bit longer, it's letting the ink soak in a bit. And I'm going to have a little bit of that off there. I'm really loving these stamps. I want to use them on everything now. Can you tell? So that's going to go there. I'll put the butterfly on the other side. I'll pop it there, just off the edge there. And I need something more on this side. And I need a couple of numbers, I think, on this side betwixt, betwixt things. Yeah, 
I've been listening to an audio book where the language <laughs> is a lot older and betwixt means between. Yeah. So then I've just said it betwixt. Crazy woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that there. Am I still on camera? Yeah. I'm conscious it's gone a little bit dark as well. Because, you know, we keep pausing this. It's got a little bit later in the day. Got my little round one now. And I'm going to pop that off the edge there. Which ones haven't I used? I've not used my little fig one, have I? And fig one and fig two. That's going to go there. And I'm going to leave that there. I think that's enough stamping on that. Right, so we've got front, we've got back, we've got insides. I'm going to put the cards in and leave them in now as well. Really liking it. And I just need some little pockets. And to make the pockets, because I want all the colours to match. Do you know when I said I'd cut the bottom off one of these? And it were unusable. I'm going to use the back of this to make the pocket. I could glue it, but I don't want to. Right, put the lid on your ink. Put your stamps up to the end of your desk, woman. And get cutting. Right, I'm going to cut some more off the edge, then hope on, on the sides. Then hopefully this will just fall apart on its own. Yeah. And I should be left with a frame that can then be used for something else. Oh, that's given me another idea now. Look at that. Yeah, and this is what I'm going to use for my pockets. I'm going to cut that off. Then I want it to be like a corner pocket. Hmm. Yeah. How long is I'm going to cut that down to six inches so that I then know half of it is three inches. Three inches high. Then I'm going to cut it down to three and a half inches wide. And then I'm going to make a cut across the corner. So I'm going to put these two together to make sure they cut the same. They're a different colour on both sides. So I'm going to put them together like that. I'm going to pop them in. And then I'm just going to make that cut across the corner. So that when I open them up, you can, can you see? Yeah. Loving it. They need some, do you know, I think they need some kind of EDP type cluster on. And I don't think I've ever made an EDP type cluster. Just going to come in and ink the edges. I've still got a bit of that VersaFine on. So I'm doing it quite lightly at first. Get the bottom, yeah. So that's going to go there. That will go there. Right. I'm going to glue that on and then I'm going to leave it there for today. The lighting's gone. I think we're going to have a storm. And this video's gone on a bit now, we're up to an hour. So I'm going to call this done and then I'll just do another one, a little shorter video, making something to go in these pockets. 
I've got to get it one bit, hoping I'll get it all done in one. It ain't quite happened. It still looks good as it is for now. Really happy with it. That needs something Edith old in the on, doesn't it? Right, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna... I'll pause the video. I'll get some Edith Holden text or whatever. She don't want to see me looking through a book for 10 minutes, do you? And I'll find one of the postcards that will look good cut in half to use as two tags for that. So, yeah, I'll pause and I'll come back with that. So, two ticks. I'm back. All you've missed is me. I fussy cut a bird and I fussy cut a butterfly. Yeah, I fussy cut the butterfly from that page <laughs> that I showed you. And I've picked that page to fussy cut my bird from. So, yeah, that's all you've missed. So, I'm also going to use the rest of this. I'm going to mat these two. Now, granted, that would have been much easier before I stuck them down. But this is, it's me. Whenever do I plan things out? I don't. Right, I've forgotten already how big that pocket was, so I'm just going to go ahead and measure it. I, I can barely remember. It's three inches by three and a half, yeah? So I'm going to cut a square off here. Two and three quarter inches by three and a quarter. Right, so here we go. I'm going to do two of those. So... The height is the lesser one, two and three quarters, and I'm going to cut two, three and a quarter wide. Ooh, I know I've cut through a butterfly on the other side, but hey ho. Am I going to get two threes and a quarters? Yeah, I am. I'll just check in. I'll just check. Yeah, that'll be perfect. I just need to go ahead and cut that angle off and make that one three and a quarter as well right here we go don't put your chopper where you're going to use it right now i need to measure cutting that so i'm going to put that on where it needs to be i'm going to grab my pencil and i'm going to mark exactly where it comes to the edge of the pocket and then I'm going to cut it off just inside that. I'm guessing what a quarter is because, yeah, I'm guessing. <laughs> I could have measured a quarter down. I could have, but this video has gone on long well enough. If it's wrong, I'll adjust it. That looks good enough to me. And then to cut this one, I'm going to use... <sighs> Which way around that one? Yeah. That wants that bit cut off, so I'm going to flip it, and I'm just going to use that as the guide. There we go. And I'm going to ink and stick, and then I'll stick my fussy cuts on too. And then I'll show you what I've chosen to put in the pockets. I've just come back to my desk as well, and the lid was off my three-in-one. So then I'm thinking, did I actually use Kalal when I stuck these on? Or have I used three-in-one? Now, to be honest, they both work. The reason I use Kalal instead of three-in-one is because it's a darn sight cheaper. But I've got the three-in-one on my desk from when I did the fabric cover on my butterfly journal. And it's just made something that Tanya at Tata Treasure said to me make a lot more sense. She's put her glues, more expensive glues, to the back of her desk so she has to reach further. Yeah, how good an idea is that? Had mine not been so handy to pick up, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. And I'm going to have to check this video once I start uploading it to, make sh to check whether I did use 3 in 1. Of course, as I'm saying this, you already know. Or maybe you didn't notice just inking these as well 
Right, so I'm going to stick this on with Clal this time, because it does the job. Yeah, you will notice as well with this project, I'm over being precious about which side of me Edith Holden book to cut. For the longest time, I spent maybe four or five times as long doing a project as I ought to, because I couldn't decide, I didn't want to cut a page if the, both sides were going to be useful. Well, yeah. All you do if you run out is buy another book. And what do we say? Buy them when they're cheap, not when you need them. Again, I'm not sure what Edith Holden books are running at at minute. But I like to keep stocked up with them. When they're cheap. Cheap, cheap. Just a chicken. <laughs> yeah, I've been that long. Chicken were cooked. Had to come feed kids. Aren't they annoying them? Kids needing feeding. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah, so if you're thinking about, if you don't have kids and you're thinking about having them, Remember, it cuts into your crafting time because you have to feed them. Yeah, I think it's the law. Yeah, I think you'd get in trouble if you didn't feed them. Right, I'm going to stick the birdies on because it's much thinner with my Anita's tacky glue. Also, I find it really difficult to glue delicate things with the Kalal. It's not... If you do put it on too fine, it tends to dry quicker than you can get things on. You know, if you've spent time popping the glue on like I am doing now, it's, it's then dried by the time you've finished gluing your piece up. Boink. Let's put you on there, Birdie. There you go. You look gorgeous there. And the flutter by. I did have a few qualms about the perspective with the butterfly being as big as the bird. But as I was flicking through the book looking for a bird, I noticed there is a page where even at Edith's own drawing, because they are these are drawings and watercolours of Edith Holden's, she'd got one page where the bird was uh, smaller than a butterfly. And I thought, if it's good enough for our Edith, it's good enough for me. So that's that. I do like it. Really do. Put your pin back in, Missy. Good girl. Right. I'm now going to show you a little disaster that happened. You know how I said I would find some postcards that I could cut in half to use in here? Look what happened. Look what happened. I thought, oh, that's a good candidate. We could have the tree on one side and the kingfisher on the other. And as I tried to take it from the middle of the postcards, apart from creasing it to death, I've ripped the top. So I'm not, not too happy about that. So I've picked two that I think I can cut down to fit in that pocket. Yeah, I think I can cut that down. I'll keep the poppy and I'll keep the rabbits, but I'll just get rid of all this on edge. And then this one, I'm just going to cut a little bit more at foliage off to leave just the bird. So get the trimmer out for the last time. And when I've done this, the project will be finished. And I'm really chuffed with this. You know, when I start off making something, I've got a vague idea in my mind what I'm going to do, but I don't actually know what I'm going to do. When it turns out good, I'm really happy. And it's turned out good. So we can have rabbits and poppies there. Perfect. And I want to cut this down to the same size as the rabbits and the poppies. I'm going to take a smidgen more after that. Yeah. We're already missing a little bit of the poppy there anyway, and Edith did that, not me. Or the people who made the postcards did. So, I can cut this to keep... I want to keep the bird and the whole of that berry. And then I think I'll be happy. So I'm just using this to check the width. Yeah, that will do it. So yeah. I'll keep the whole of that berry in the bird. Really, I don't know which way around to put them. That one and that one. We'll put the rabbit with the butterfly. So it were all birds and butterflies till I went and stuck a rabbit in. But I think that rabbit there, he's got his ears poked up saying, I've just seen a bird. 
another one to say no mate it were a butterfly so that is my take on it and that's that all we need to do is just ink around the edge of this when i find my dauber that's buried i'm not even going to put anything on these i don't think they need tabs or anything i think they're fine as they are If this doesn't close too well, I'll just tie probably some string around it. I think string will look good with this craft. Right. Pop that in. Oh, I'm so happy with that. So there we have it, my little Edith Olden. Fold over junk journal insert. It actually does stay pretty flat. And you know when I've left that under something flat, that will be fine. I'm not even putting anything else on there. I could put a label. It doesn't need it. It just needs that. That's all it needs. So, thank you very much for sticking with me if you've got to the end. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. So, thank you very much. Bye.